Cats are funny creatures, soft and cuddly and gentle most of the time, but in a flash they can turn into wild animals, killers, ready to destroy even their own kind. People can be like that sometimes too. Take my neighbors in Valley Road. It's a pleasant little street, only a couple of blocks long. And everybody knows everybody else. They're warm and friendly and cooperative, these neighbors of mine. Most of the men work together in the mill downtown and play together nights and weekends. The women have their babies together. And the kids grow up almost as though they were all members of the same big family. You couldn't ask for a friendlier place than Pleasant Valley. It didn't seem quite so friendly, though, when the new people moved into the block. Foreigners, obviously, from the looks of them. A good many of those same warm-hearted neighbors began to carry on like so many cats. Have you ever noticed how often we are that way about people and things we aren't familiar with? The new family stayed very much to themselves. They made no overtures and we let them alone too. Our wives said they were stuck up. The new people were English, name of Trombley we learned from the grocer. Like most Englishmen, his first thought was of next summer's garden. Or was it a garden? It looked more as though he were trying to bury himself alive. Well, the Englishman obviously was insane, everybody said. The speculation about him even interrupted the Saturday night poker game. But maybe he wasn't crazy. Maybe there was something worth digging for in his backyard. Maybe. Well, Joe Watson's curiosity finally got the best of him. He broke the ice and it made us all look pretty silly. <laughs> of course not, old chap. Wish it were true, though. No, this is going to be a bomb shelter. We're only 12 miles from the city and with the steel mill, well, one can't tell, can one? Oh, it doesn't make sense to me. Now, the way I figure it, if the bomb drops, we're goners anyway, so what's the difference? But you're... Wrong, Mr. Uh, uh, Joe Watson. Uh, mind if I come over and take a look? By all means, Mr. Watson. Well, that's some big hole you've got there. But I still think you're going to a lot of trouble for nothing. Oh, but you're wrong about not doing anything. I saw a bit of bombing in England during the last show. It was almost continuous from 1939 to 1945, night after night. But we only had 29,000 casualties in all that time. I can tell you, it'd been a lot worse if it hadn't been for shelters. 
and an efficient civil defense organization. Yes, but you didn't have the H-bomb then. No, we didn't. And it's true the H-bomb is many times more powerful than anything we experienced in World War II. But the experts tell us that the best thing to do about the H-bomb is to get out of the way of it. Evacuate if you live in the center of town and have enough warning. But living out here like we do, this could mean the difference between living and not living. Now, if you'll give me a hand up out of this hole of mine, I'll show you. Now, this is the way our shelter is going to look when it's finished. You see, I'm using six-inch reinforced concrete walls all around with a concrete slab roof and two and a half feet of earth on top of that. The air intake's here, and this pipe is for the aerial of the wireless set. But a setup like that is going to cost a fortune, isn't it? This won't cost any more than a new garage, and we think our lives are rather more important than the finish of our motor car. <laughs> of course, we could uh, just dig a hole and shore it and roof it with planks and cover it with dirt, but I don't think that'd stand up long under a terrific H-bomb blast. That's why we're building a sturdy shelter, even though it will cost us more. So, Mr. Trombley let us in on his secret. He told us how to get plans of our own from our local or state civil defense director. Plans for all kinds of shelters. Most of us living so close to an important target area had given some thought to the matter and then dropped the idea because of the cost. But Trombley had an answer for that too. You can provide good protection for only a few dollars and a little weekend carpenter work if you have a cellar that's entirely below ground, just by building a stout lean-to, like this. A basement provides considerable protection against radiation. Anyhow, and this protection can be increased by sandbagging the lean-to. Either way, the shelter will protect you from falling debris, in case your house is blown down by the blast of the bomb. Or you can do something more elaborate, but not much more expensive with sandbags around a corner room in the basement. We're building outside, well away from the house, to get below ground and eliminate the hazard of possible fire or collapse of the house. And although basement shelters can give uh, quite a lot of protection, ours will give even more. But everybody should have some sort of a shelter, because there may not be time for evacuation if an emergency comes. Well, things really started popping in our neighborhood after that. There still were a few who scoffed, but most of us began to make some provision against a bombing. Ed Martin was working on a slit trench, which he said he was going to cover with a concrete slab and dirt on top of that. Several families began building shelters in their basements. And a few of us went whole hog and started elaborate underground bomb proofs in our own backyards. The Trombleys finished their shelter first and invited us in for a look. It was a regular tea party in most unusual surroundings. It's not luxurious, but to do even if we have to stay underground for days to time to avoid radioactive fallout. But what on earth would you do, sitting down here day after day? Would drive you crazy, I should think. Oh, no. We've got all the food and water that we need, and all in cans and bottles, so there's no chance of contamination. And we didn't forget to bring the can opener either. And we've books and games to keep our minds occupied. And of course, there's the wireless. Well, it's a battery set because we probably won't have electricity down here after a bombing, so that's how we'll get our news and instructions from the civil defense people. On Colonel Rad channels 640 and 1240. And uh, we'll have plenty of light too. 
in case the power goes off, which it undoubtedly will, and there are extra bulbs and batteries, just in case. Uh, what are those tools for over there in the corner? Oh, these. They're just in case our shelter gets covered with the wreckage from our house, or if we want to help pull out one of our neighbors who's not so fortunate. One has to consider these things, you know. Oh, what's that? A chemical water closet. Oh, I, I see. Uh, how about a spot of tea? Oh, why, I'd love it. Can I help? Oh, no, no, thanks. There's not room, really. Here, I'll do it in just a moment. Now, one for each cup. And then we shall do one for the pot. And there, now, it'll be ready in a jiffy. Well, I must say you have this place fixed up very cosily down here. Even a hot plate. Although I don't suppose that'll be much use to you after a bombing. No, we just put it down here for the convenience. Now, actually, if the power goes off, we'll have to use canned heat, and we can't even use that very much because, you know, fire burns oxygen, and we'll need all we have if we have to stay underground for very long. Mm. But it does seem a shame to spend all that money for something you may never need. No, it isn't a waste at all because we can use it as a playroom to keep the young ones out of the house when we're entertaining. Or as a storage place for foods that should be kept cool, like your old-fashioned root cellar. I can use it as a tool shed. And of course, it can always serve as a doghouse for me. <laughs> when Mum gets annoyed because of my pipe ashes on the carpet. Oh, John, what a thing to say. Whatever will our neighbors think? <laughs> well, it was a nice party, and everyone agreed the Trombleys were perfectly swell people, in spite of their different accent. But there's no getting away from it. People can be a lot like cats sometimes, can't they? <laughs>